Let's get the latest from inside the courtroom now with CNN's Paula Reed. She's live outside the courthouse for us. Paula, a, a bit of a surprise that the judge would allow Donald Trump to address the court. And nothing is surprising here, Boris, but things certainly taking a turn in the last few minutes. We know yesterday uh, there were negotiations. Uh, we had learned between the Trump team and the judge here about possibly allowing Trump to participate in closing arguments. Now, this would be highly unusual. Closing arguments are an opportunity for lawyers to summarize their case. And the Trump team would not agree to some restrictions the judge laid out, uh, insisting that Trump stick to the material and relevant information and not attack the district attorney or the judge. So things had been business as usual here. The closing arguments went forward. Trump's attorney, Chris Kyes, summarized his argument. Other attorneys got up to summarize theirs. But then Chris Kyes got up just a few moments ago and asked if former President Trump could address the court. And he then launched into what our colleagues who were inside described as a monologue, telling the court, quote, the facts are the financial statements are perfect. There are no witnesses against us. The banks got all their money paid back. There were great loans. This was a political witch hunt. That is really how Trump and his lawyers have framed this entire case as a politically motivated and manufactured allegation. Now, Trump says, when you say don't go outside of these things, we have a situation where I am an innocent man. So there is he's referring to the restrictions that the judge tried to put on any participation that he would have. He said, quote, I'm being persecuted by somebody running for office referring to the district attorney who did promise to investigate Trump when she ran for office. He's insisting that I have to go outside of these bounds. So here he's making his case to the court, but also arguing with the judge and any restrictions the judge wanted to put on him. Now, I want to bring in our colleague, Kara Scannell, who is right next to me. Kara was inside the court earlier for oral arguments. Now, Kara, you called it. You knew that Trump couldn't get through the day without participating in some way. I mean, is this surprising? You know, nothing in this trial has been surprising. Everything that we think is going to happen according to certain courts changes and it doesn't happen. So it doesn't surprise me at all that the judge allowed Trump to speak because part of the reason he gave initially of why he would allow Trump to speak is he said he had more on the line in this case than anyone else. And since there is no jury, he said it was only fair to let Trump speak. But of course, as you just laid out, Trump went beyond the contours of what the judge wanted to be permissible here by talking about a witch hunt, by making this a political case and not arguing arguing just the facts in the case. You know, but for closing arguments, for the bulk of it, they were mostly delivered by Chris Keis, his attorney, and he did stick to the facts in the case. And he went through the evidence that was presented, saying to the judge that the attorney general's office did not present any witnesses who testified that there was fraud here. And that has been a core, consistent theme of the defense, that there was no banker who said they would have done anything differently if they had gotten different financial statements. So saying that the AG didn't meet their burden and didn't bring this case. Now, part of Keis is, is a closing argument. He said, this entire case is a manufactured claim to serve a political agenda. It has always been press releases and posturing, but no proof at all. The attorney general is seeking to strip them, according to the papers, of everything. No one from the marketplace showed up and said there was a problem. So that, again, that's the core of this argument here, that they didn't have the witnesses testifying. Now, the judge has already ruled in this case that the financial statements were fraudulent, that the values of some of these properties were inflated, you know, that the value of Trump's triplex apartment in Manhattan was inflated. So he's already made a number of these determinations. And even in a ruling last month, he said that that some of the witnesses that Trump's team put on, he said, were just not credible. So he's already laid down the contours of what he thinks of this evidence in the case. But of course, everyone gets their shot today to try to convince him a little bit more. We also heard from Alina Haba, another one of the attorneys representing Trump and some of the co-defendants in this case. She made a point of saying that there was no fraud. Both she and Keis focused a lot on Michael Cohen, who was the attorney general's, one of their witnesses, the one witness who testified that he was told indirectly by Trump to boost the values of these properties, along with Alan Weisberg, the former CFO. And this investigation started when Michael Cohen testified before Congress in 2019. The attorney general's office has been clear about that. So they were focusing on his credibility because during Cohen's testimony, initially he said Trump directed him. Then he walked it back and said it wasn't a direct or directive that it was um, a known an inference that Trump gives. Now, Trump's sons are also on trial here. Eric Trump was in the courtroom today, along with Trump advisor, 
Boris Epstein. He was sitting beside him. Their attorneys also had a quick shot at the end, and they also said that there was no evidence against their clients. So you know it's a legal proceeding, very much a political event. They started their argument. This is a politically motivated case, and then Trump arguing at the very end the same thing. Boris, I'm going to toss it back to you because I think we were expecting Trump to address the cameras after that monologue. Yeah, and as we understand it, he will uh, give a public statement at about 2.30 p.m. So uh, at some point once this wraps up, he's going to head down to uh, a Trump property near Wall Street to make those remarks again at 2.30. We'll, of course, bring them to you as they happen. All right, and certainly we'll be uh, awaiting much more ahead. Uh, a lot of interesting stuff already happening there, as we heard from Kara. She was in the courtroom. I want to bring in CNN senior political analyst Gloria Borger and CNN legal analyst Carrie Cordero. Uh, we see this carry uh, Trump even when he is facing legal liability. He sees political opportunity. He certainly took it in that kind of monologue that he gave in court. What do you think of what he said and what you've heard so far today? Well, it's interesting that the judge uh, did apparently allow him to have some statement. His attorney gave the actual closing argument, which was quite lengthy, but then he did he was able to say something in his own defense. What's always interesting about this case is that the legal judgment on liability, because of course this is a civil case, has already been made by the judge. This is all about the penalties and a lot of the arguments that the former president's lawyers seem to be making, including in their closing arguments, goes to the merits of whether or not there was fraud, which is already a done deal. And so this right. is about the consequences. This is about the penalties. And so uh, the former president being able to have an opportunity to say something is obviously in his interest politically, which is about all he can get out of this at this point. One of the things that strikes me about that in this regard, Gloria, is the contrast from what we saw last night during the debate between Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley. Right. Uh, they were both talking about how these legal issues are a distraction, how voters shouldn't be concerned with these things. Trump doesn't seem to think that. He's leaning into this all oh. the way, and it doesn't seem to be hurting him in the T least. Totally. I mean, he commandeered the microphone in court and essentially gave a political speech, not only attacking Letitia James, but also attacking the judge. And, you know, he said, according to one transcript, that you can't listen for more than one minute. And he said, I did nothing wrong going on and on. I'm sure we'll hear more of this today. But it is quite stunning that, you know, uh, his attorney was asked to control his client by the judge, and clearly he couldn't and didn't and didn't want to. This was, you know, this was a move that they had choreographed mm. and planned, even though, you know, they didn't get explicit permission to do it. And no matter what the judge said, he did, it, Donald Trump did exactly what he wanted to do. Asking forgiveness. Right. Well, not asking really. forgive, asking permission at first, being denied, uh, not really answering that, and then maybe just dealing with it a little bit later. Well, and it is a risk for the court to have him speak publicly. Um, the, the, this particular judge has had to deal with the fact that the former president has made statements about the judge, has been made statements about court personnel, and so there has been an underlying security issue as it relates. And, and as was reported at the top of the hour, there was a swatting incident apparently against this particular judge. And this swatting issue as it pertains to judges, court personnel, elected officials, I mean, this is something that is pervading not just this case, but all of the legal cases that are wrapped up into the campaign. It, it's also part of the Trump persona, which is that nobody can make the case better than Donald Trump. His attorneys can't do it. Nobody can do it. So he felt the need to stand up and, and put a bow on it and be the one to sort of have the final word. I mean, it is, it is very characteristic of Donald Trump to say, you know, I know more than my lawyers. I can do a better job than my lawyers. I'm going to address this judge directly and don't tell me what to do. I'm sure his attorneys, as Paula Reed has said earlier, probably didn't think this was a great idea, mm. but he did it anyway.